So here we're going to look at another fighter of the Soviet Union, the old Soviet Union, by the name of Vasily Shishov. Vasily Shishov. Now, as you can see, the text has been translated with Google, uh, Google Translate, which means there's going to be some errors here and there, which means I can't just read it verbatim. I'm just going to have to apply my own interpretation and translation from time to time. However, the uh, relevant facts the more material facts as they say are all there and that's what we're going to follow so they're going to sort of serve as guidelines rather than just reading it through we're just going to have to apply some common sense um, rather than reading it because the English is going to be all over the place I mean what I mean is grammatically it's going to be all over the place because as you know how translations work they work in a particular kind of way so there you go so we're going to start off by looking at Vasily let me let me get my my tools out and be looking at should I use red today you know don't have a, a wide selection let me use black I never use that let me use that so today we're going to be looking at Vasily Shyshov all right so rather than say in 12 years you should say at 12 years old he enrolled in the boxing section now boxing section is the old soviet union so obviously we can understand that it will have sections and you know what i mean um, departments and all these things very uh, bureaucratic so he enrolled in the boxing section According to the memoirs of Vasily Shyshov himself, he lost his first five official fights. And then, thanks to perseverance and hard work, he, uh, well, victories came. Some victories came along. He won, now this is something that gets fucked up. Let's just try and translate it the right way. He won a tournament, a city tournament for young men and then the region. But as you can see, I read, it says, he won the city for young men. There is a city for young men. He won a city tournament for young men and then the region. Uh, okay. I, I'm guessing that was also uh, a regional, the regionals for young men. Um, moving on, it says world fame came to Shyshov in 1981 when he won the World Cup at the Montreal World Weight Competition. I'm not sure what it needs an S there and won a gold medal at the European Championships in Tampere wherever that is I need to Google map that the following season he won the USSR Championship Champions title or Championship a year later he replenished the gold medal sorry the medal collection with another gold award of the European Championship okay now, I hope everybody's following me and uh, understands what's going on there. Let's look at the next part. Have to. There you go. Here we are. So, at the World Champion, sorry, at the World Boxing Championships in 1982 in Munich, Vasily Saishov, oops, forgive me, nearly messed up there. Vasily. Saishov lost in the first fight to the Cuban Garcia V. Oh, Garcia. All right. To Cuban Garcia. To a, to a Cuban named Garcia. I don't know who the hell he was. All right. But Vasily Saishov gave the initiative to the young Cuban boxer from the first round and boxed only when he left, not trying to counterattack. Okay. So he, he boxed on the back foot. He uh, he gave the initial. He was counter punching, basically. I suppose he was counter attacking, and uh, the Cuban pressed the action. Therefore, the Cuban won. So it's almost like a a criticism of the strategy applied at that time in 1982. In 1982, all right, World Championships. There would have been great competition between the USSR and Cubans at that time anyway. Okay. 
Okay, um, in 1983, Vasily Shaishov participated in the European Championships in Varna, Bulgaria, where he won gold. Accomplished quite a few things. In 1984, Shaishov won again and became won again and became the champion of the USSR and was ready to represent the country at the Los Angeles Olympics. However, the government decided to boycott the games. Alright. Yeah. The government decided to boycott the games. In the period between 1985 and 1987, Vasily Saishov, three times in a row, became was three times in a row the champion, became the champion of the USSR. If I was to put that grammatically correct, how would I say Vasily Saishov? Between the periods of 1985 to 1984, Vasily Shaishov became the champion of the USSR three times in a row. Okay. In 1986, he won the world championship in the American city of Reno. All right. Let's move on to the next part, the final part, I believe this is going to be, which is this uh, little part here. Expand a bit. I think that's fine. All right. He said um, in 1987, Vasily Shaisov for the third time received the gold medal. For the third time, in 1987, for the third time, Vasily Shaisov received the gold medal of the European Champion at the European Championships, remaining the leader of the national team. Shaisov was supposed to take part in the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul. But four months before the start of the competition, he received a serious leg injury, underwent an operation for his Achilles tendon, and was forced to refuse the trip. Alright, so let's look at the career of this Russian gentleman, Nikolai Fedorovich Korolev. Alright, we're going to uh, check out this gentleman here, see what he's about. Alright, so we start here. Nikolai Fedorovich Korolev began his career in sports in 1933 under the leadership of Ivan Stepanovich Bogayev. Interesting character, this gentleman here. One of the founders of Soviet boxing. On October 22, 1936, in Moscow, in the circus building on Svetsnoy Boulevard, the title of absolute boxing champion of the USSR was first played. The opponent of Korolev was a very strong and experienced Viktor Mikhailov. After six rounds of three minutes, Nikolai became the first glove of the Soviet Union in 1937. He won the World Workers' Olympiad in Antwerp, knocking out two opponents in the first round. Nikolai graduated from the School of Trainers, having received one of the first diplomas in the Soviet Union. In 1939, Nicholas was called up for military service. He became a candidate, a cadet, forgive me, at the School of Fighter Pilots. However, due to a plane crash and a serious injury in February 1941, Korolev was forced to resign. During the Great Patriotic War, N.F. Korolev served in the detachment of the hero of the Soviet Union, Colonel D.N. Medvedev. He carried, he sorry, he twice carried the wounded D.N. Medvedev from the battlefield. In the post-war years, Nikolai Fedorovich served in the Northern Fleet for more than 10 years. In 1944, Nikolai Fedorovich again entered the ring at the USSR Championship in 1944. He won a silver medal losing to Andro Nasa, sorry, Nasabadov, 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 all right, in the final. In the same 1944, in a difficult duel with Igeni 
Ogu Rekov. Ogu Rekov. He returned the title of absolute champion of the USSR and in 1945 repeated this achievement. In 1946, NF Korolov became the winner of the international tournaments in Helsinki and Prague. Okay, so next up we're looking at this guy, Valery Lovov. His full name, I believe, is Valery Konstantinovich Lovov. As you can see here, Valery Konstantinovich Lovov. Soviet boxer and um, he fought in the 70s one of the things that stands out about him is apparently he even knocked out or knocked down Sugar Ray Leonard in 1973 in the first round when they first met there used to be a traditional meeting between the Soviet Union and the USS I'm sorry the Soviet Union and the USA the USSR and the USA and in 1973, when he partook in it, he supposedly knocked out. I'm not sure what the knocked out, because knockout in amateurs is different from professionals. In the first round, uh, he supposedly, well, let's say stopped or knocked out Sugary Leonard. However, I've just watched a video of him online from 1979 fighting some guy out of St. Louis, Emmanuel something. I can't remember the gentleman's name. I don't think he really did anything in the professionals. And um, I have to say that fight looks like a robbery. They gave it to Valery Konstantinovich, but I think that the commentators were also very much on side with the Americans. So some of the fight, some of the stuff that they got did, that the Russian did by buzzing the American from time to time wasn't actually acknowledged by the commentators and they believe that the American gentleman won. I think I'm, I could connect some of that to this just for the hell of it but it depends on how quickly I get through this. This isn't a long segment anyway. is isn't a long segment anyway and as usual when we get here we, uh, we have to apply some common sense which means that the Google translation isn't going to be accurate. A lot of it is going to be all over the place grammatically, of course, but I suppose we can add our own translation or just get a feeling as in what they're trying to communicate with us. There are certain things that are going to be difficult, of course, to, uh, to decipher. For example, something like this. I don't know what the hell that is, but I'm guessing that you see a lot of these things to do with clubs in the um, USSR, in the old USSR, and also when they talk about boxing section, that means the boxing administration of the old USSR bureaucratic system, okay, and um, so on and so forth. So, and of course, you're going to get, because of the translation, some sentences are going to be, well, what we regard as being logically, grammatically correct in English don't seem the same way when it's translated from Russian or English or even Scandinavian languages from time to time because and uh, when you look at it from that perspective it makes a great deal of sense however that being said let's get to it shall we so Valery Konstantinovich Lovov dreamed of becoming a boxer from the first class so what that means is like a first class, a boxer within the first class, a first class boxer, okay, within the bureaucratic system. And this I don't necessarily understand too well. The elder brother of the future athlete was engaged in boxing. So his brother, yeah, I understand that, but it's just the way they've written it. So the elder brother, his elder brother was already engaged in boxing and Valerie did not want to ride to the section, which is a boxing section, because of his height and weight, insufficient height and weight, forgive me, jumped the gun there, insufficient height and weight. It was only, I've added that myself, in the eighth grade, only in the eighth grade did Valerie, was Valerie accepted, Valerie was accepted, was Valerie accepted into the boxing section. Although he then weighed only 38 kilograms, only 38 kilograms okay at the age of 18 Valery Lovov became a member of the adult team of Shuvashia 
I haven't done any research on that, so I don't know what that means. I think it might be a city or a town, uh, a club, I don't know. But I'm guessing this here is more to do with clubs. I Shavasha, as part of which he made his debut in the Spartakiad of the peoples of the RFFSR in Saratov. Right, you gotta do some research to understand what that means if you are in the least bit interested in that. Okay, then then he participated in the championship of the Russian Dynamo in Tambov, where he performed the title of Master of Sports, where he performed as the with the title of Master of Sports, where he held the title as Master of Sports. Okay, the winner of the youth championship of the USSR was recognized as the best box of the tournament okay did that mean he won it or they're just speaking in general terms the winner of the youth championship of the USSR was recognized as the best box of the tournament let me go a bit further a month and a half later he became the European okay so let's say he won it or else they would have elaborated a little bit more so it's best it's okay to say that he won it all right a month and a half later, he became the European Junior Champion in Bucharest. Bucharest, Bucharest. That's Romania, right? In Bucharest. After that, he was awarded the title of Master of Sports of International Class and included in the USSR national team. At a traditional meeting between boxers of the USSR and America, that is USA, in 1973, Lovov uh, knocked out Ray Leonard in the first round. All right. Now I've done some. I made an error in the way I've sort of uh, collected this information. So what I mean is like it doesn't run smoothly. So I've actually had to underline where I'm going to start again on the next page. So here we go. It says the future Olympic, and here we go. Oh, so. Oop, oop do that that's not right forgive me um we go here so we have to start around here so what what I, what that means basically is that we're not reading this part we're not reading that part there okay so we start in that the future Olympic champion, three time world champion among professionals. So he knocked out Sugar Ray Leonard, who was a future Olympic champion. Uh, now actually, let me clear that so we can go through it again. Now, after that, he was awarded the title of Master of Sports in International Class and included in the USSR national team. At a traditional meeting between boxers of the USSR and the USA in 1973, Lovov knocked out Ray Leonard in the first round. The future Olympic champion, three time world champion among in the professionals. Okay, okay, that they're talking about Sugar Ray Leonard there. Although he lost that fight, oh, wait, so he knocked him down. He didn't knock him out, he knocked him down in the first round. He knocked Sugar Ray Leonard down in the first round, he didn't knock him out. So I hadn't read that. So, he's, so he lost the fight. All right, he lost that fight. He won the Spartakiad of the peoples of the USSR in 1975. I need to do some research to understand what that's about. I'm guessing that's an interesting topic. In 1975, this tournament also had the status of the 41st USSR Boxing Championship. In 1977, he graduated from the Department of Agricultural Mechanization of the Shuvas Agricultural Institute. So what we were talking about earlier, let me see if I can go there. We're gonna double back a bit. We double back a bit. So what we were talking about earlier, in as much as Shubashia, so that really and truly is a town. I'm guessing it's a town, and that's where he went to university. That's where he went to university. All right, back again. At the uh, Shuvash Agricultural Institute. I should start drawing these. Really, um, trying here, and I'm making a mess of things. But 
fuck it, you know. Then due to illness, he missed the USSR championship in Frunz. Don't know where that is. Sounds Austrian. And was removed from the national team. Could be Austrian or Swiss. Um, he returned to the team to speak at the USSR championship. I went to a training camp in Armenia after which I won very confidently at the USSR championship in February 1978 in Tbilisi. I haven't heard that in a long time. If you're wondering where Tbilisi is, have a guess. Yep, yeah, those of you who know Georgia, Tbilisi, that's the capital of Georgia. All right. Um, he won the world championship in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, old Yugoslavia. Is it, is it part of Croatia now? Or wasn't it? What's the other one? Uh, you got Croats and you got the other ones. I can't remember. Serb, Serbia. Is it, is it Croatia or Serbia? I think it's Croatia, isn't it? Belgrade. And um, received the title of Honored Master of Sports of the USSR. Now, that was a difficult one to read, but I don't care. So fun, we're gonna archive that as well. Thank you very much for following me through. And we're gonna to go to the next one because hell, yeah, we enjoy doing this stuff, don't we? Okay, next up, we're looking at this guy here, Valerie V. Chegobov. Valerie Chegobov. You know what? I haven't actually read much about this guy. Or what I whatever I have read, I haven't really um, taken in too well. So, you know, I'm new to this guy. I'm just as new to this guy as you guys are. Right, as usual, we're going to go through the text. It's been translated from um, via, forgive me, via Google Translate, which means it's going to be terribly inaccurate. But we're going to make it the best of what we've got at the moment. It is what it is. You know what I mean? What I mean is that not the information, the information most likely is accurate, despite the fact that it's coming from a particular perspective. So at the end of the day, Historically, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to make them look great. These boxes look great because it's been told from a, a, a old USSR appreciation perspective, and uh, you're not going to get much negativity in as much as those boxes are concerned. Particularly, well, it is what it is. Let me not dwell on that. What I'm trying to say is this: is that um, the facts most likely are going to be accurate in as much as um, what he took part in, what he accomplished, and so on and so forth. The devil, of course, is in the detail, but we're not concerned with that. We're just getting an overview. However, what might be a bit difficult is the translation, which means I have to apply myself and see how I get through it. You know what I mean? How I can uh, put it all together. But since I haven't been through it before, we're going to be doing it together, which, you know, might be a bit tedious. It always is anyway. But that being said, let's get to it, shall we? Enough of the chitta chatta. So, Valerie G, don't know what the G stands for, Tregobov, began to actively engage in boxing at the age of 15. He achieved his first serious success in the ring in 1963 when he took part in the European Cup champion competitions and managed to reach the final stage. In 1966, he won bronze. This reads rather well. I haven't read this, so it reads rather well. In 1966, he won bronze, and in 1968, he won a silver medal at the USSR Championship. And in the latter case, he lost only to two-time Olympic champion Boris Legutin. In 1969, he became the champion of the Soviet Union for the first time and won the European Championship in Bucharest, where, among other things, he was recognized as the best boxer of the competition. In 1970, Dragobov defended the title of champion of the USSR a year later, he won the European Championships in Madrid. The European Championship, not ships, in Madrid. For these achievements, he received the honorary titles, honorary titles, honored master of sports and outstanding boxer. Nine times, so we have to go to the next page. I did that again, which I shouldn't have. It's really ridiculous when I do that. Um, let me clear, clear that off. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Oops. Here we are. It says nine-time champion of the USFRC. Sorry, USFSR. 
<laughs> USFSR nine time champion so that's got to be some big championship in the old Soviet Union right I'm guessing that's what it is I'm guessing that's that's what that is I need to check that out I need to do some research on that Anyway, in 1972, he won the USSR Championship for the third time and thanks to a series of successful performances, was awarded the right to defend the country's honour <laughs> at the Summer Olympic Games in Munich. In the first fight of the one of 16 finals, the American Reggie Jones defeated the American... The American Reggie Jones defeated the American by a separate decision. Is that a... The American Reggie Jones defeated the American by a separate decision, 3-2. But in the net, okay, okay. So two Americans fought, I suppose. All right, 3-2. But but in the next one of eight finals, by an unanimous decision, he lost to the British Alan Minter. Alan Minter of the old Hagler fame. Okay. Um, no black man's gonna beat me sort of thing okay and that's what they say anyway i don't know i have to read up on it but they said that's what he said and there was a whole bunch of racism races there was a out races outpouring when uh hagler beat him in england all right so uh british alan minter who won the bronze medal and later became a rather famous professional boxer all right then that's that for that for now um you know what we'll we'll continue with this series and as i do it i'm guessing they'll get better at the moment this is i mean i'm making little errors here and there you know what i mean particularly with the mark and the lining and everything but it is what it is i like things to be perfect but hardly anybody watches these things anyway next up we're looking at oleg Groyevich. Grigoyev, Oleg Grigoyevich Grigoyev. Now, haven't really done a great deal of um, research into this guy, but I've kept him there for a while, so we're going to do it together, and I'm going to join it together with the rest, as usual. Um, give you the background. I don't think I need to keep on saying this. It's been translated from Google Translate from the text that you see down there, and uh, it's not always accurate or grammatically accurate, but we're not interested in the grammar, we're more interested in the uh, details of the gentleman's life in as much as amateur boxing in the old USSR is concerned and why he is regarded as, a, as one of their uh, more favoured people. But anyway, that being said, one second, yo. Alright, so let's get to the reading. Facts about boxing legends. Oleg Grigoyevich Grigoyev became the fourth Soviet Olympic boxing champion and the only one from the entire boxing team of the Soviet Union who climbed the highest podium at the 1960 Olympics in Rome. In addition to this, the highest achievement for every amateur boxer, Oleg Grigoyevich, during his 15-year career in boxing, became the holder of the European champion, the European Championship, three more times and six times. And, and for six to, and six times won the title of USSR champion. So he won the uh, he was a champion of the USSR for six times as well. Oleg Grigoyevich, no Grigoyev, Oleg Grigoyev achieved these many many of these. Um, sorry, let me see. Oleg Grigoyevich achieved these many of his regalia. Okay, let's just go with it. Primarily due to his dedicated work in the training hall and the nature of the maximalist, of the maximalist, um, gold maximum, maximalist, or well, well um, perfectionist. That's, I think what they're trying to say there's been uh, a perfectionist by nature. I think that's what they're trying to say. Can't be sure. At first, the 1960 Olympic year was not very successful for Grigoyev. In the USSR Championship final, Oleg again lost to his old rival, Boris Stepanov. Boris Stepanov, we need to do some research on that when we can. But I think I've seen his name about twice now, Boris Stepanov. Not sure. 
But despite this, national team coaches decided to bet on a younger and more promising fighter and the right to speak at the Olympics in Rome was entrusted not only to the 30 year old second 30 year let's go down 30 year old Stepanov but to the 22 year old Gregoriev Gregoriev in the first match Oleg easily beat the main hope of the Brazilian team at that so here we go when we bring this in it starts around here because you see 22 year old Gregoriev in the first match Oleg easily beat the main hook of the Brazilian team at that tournament. What's his name? Vladimiro Claudio? Vladimiro Claudio. Whoever he is. Alright. Then in a first battle with the disagreement of the referee notes with a score of 3-2, a victory was won over the strong Englishman Francis Taylor. Gregoriev passed the quarter-final stage without a fight because his opponent from Burma, modern Miami, then, oh, sorry, that's his name, <laughs> I thought they misspelled something, Thien Muin, Muin, Thien, is that Thien Muin, Thien Muin, did not enter the ring. In the semi-finals with a score of 4-1, to one, there was a bit there was a bit pole. What does that mean? There was a bit pole. Brunon Bendik. There was a big pole, I suppose. I think that's what it was. There was a big pole. Brunon Bendik. And in the final, Grigoyev, Gregoriev, Vigoyev, had a meeting with the local boxer Primo Zamparini. Primo Zamparini. Italian, right? Even though I don't understand the, the, the. But anyway, Gregoriev, Gregoriev won a tense match and became the Olympic champion. Wow! So he was Olympic champion. Well, thank you for, thank you for that. That this was actually a very good one. Um, it was easy to read and. Um, you know gives you insight into other people that people can go research so thank you